Welcome to this visit to Fitzroy Crossing, Western Australia. Fitzroy is a popular place for artists. It's the center of cattle country. The Great Northern Highway. Fitzroy is a small town 400 kilometers east of Broome and 300 kilometers west of Halls Creek. It's about two and a half thousand kilometers from the state capital of Western Australia, Perth. The town's been on map since 1903 and is on a low rise surrounded by the vast floodplains of the Fitzroy River. In 2006, the population was about 1,500 people, 90% of which were Aboriginal. Fitzroy was discovered and named by Captain John Lord Stokes of the Beagle, 1838. He named it after Captain Robert Fitzroy, Captain of the Beagle, between 1831 and 1836, during its voyage around the world. The Fitzroy River is the longest river system in the Kimberley at 733 kilometers. An early photograph of the old Fitzroy. An aerial photograph. The current settlement of Fitzroy showing its airport. On the uh, northern side, the right-hand side of Fitzroy, is a multi-million dollar hotel and caravan complex called the Fitzroy River Travel Lodge. Here it is here in a Google picture. Fitzroy, since 1903, has been a popular stopping off point for tourists. These women stand outside termite mounds. Here I am, Dawn, at the Fitzroy River crossing. A map at the travel center showing the popular dining, fuel, and caravan stopover places. A map of the city itself. Notice the uh, Pioneer Cemetery and the Crossing Inn, that being the older structure. This map shows the surrounding community. Approaching the Fitzroy Travel Lodge after a recent bushfire. The Fitzroy River Lodge is really quite a luxurious place. They even sell petrol at here a dollar forty-eight a liter. The caravan park is located behind the travel lodge. The large building is the washroom facilities. The main road into the caravan area. My travel companion, Jamie Wright, sets up camp in our 20-foot caravan. It's 44 degrees Celsius the three days we spend at Fitzroy Crossing. Leaving the Fitzroy Crossing Lodge on the Great Northern Highway, one approaches the river crossing. It's one lane as clearly shown by this photograph. There's a pedestrian crossing on the bridge. A Google satellite photograph showing the bridge. 
any crocodiles in there to the river in this area during the dry season is pretty well dry. That's the months of June, July, August, September, October. Aboriginal children have play in the Fitzroy. an Aboriginal elder drawing on the banks of the river. During the wet season, that is during the uh, summer months, uh, January, February, March, uh, there can be extensive flooding of the river caused by cyclones. This newspaper article dated 2002 indicates that the flood is subsiding. Let's look at some early historical photographs of Fitzroy Crossing. Fitzroy today. The first indication of the community is the Shell Roadhouse. One then proceeds down the road past a series of small buildings and the high school. There's only one uh, shopping complex or supermarket in town and here it is. It's got a number of uh, stores in this long galvanized building. The building has some interesting paintings on the side illustrating the cattle industry. These uh, Aboriginal boys asked to have their picture taken in front of the Fitzroy Crossing Town map. Literature indicates that uh, Fitzroy River Crossing experienced quite a problem with Aboriginal culture and alcohol with many children hanging outside the tourist bureau. Now let's take a look at the Pioneer Cemetery and the Crossing Inn. The map shows their location. This is the Pioneer Cemetery. Let's move on to the Oak Crossing. In early days, uh, vehicles were fjorded across the Fitzroy River using teams of donkeys or camels. Camels are used to pull this uh, load of supplies across the river. A traveler waits to cross the Fitzroy River. The Fitzroy Crossing today at the old site. One can certainly see the need for a modern bridge. A historical shot of the old Fitzroy Crossing. No visit is complete to Fitzroy Crossing without a drive out to the historical town site and the legendary Crossing Inn built in 1887 as a shanty inn and trade store for long distance travelers about to fjord the mighty Fitzroy River. The old Fitzroy Crossing town site is now no more than a few disused buildings. Nearby is the old low level crossing of the river, which, while serviceably dry, obviously has limited use during the wet season. One of the most notorious pubs of all Australia, it's well known for having the second highest sales of slabs of beer in WA 
and for the ensuing bad behavior. The outside of the pub is covered with steel concrete, reinforcing mesh. I think this is the actual wind section itself. A local patron at the crossing inn. Geeky Gorge National Park is 18 kilometers northeast of the town, named after Sir Archibald Geeky, a British geologist. It's named by Edward Hardman, who traveled through the Kimberley in 1883. It's formed by the Fitzroy River causing, uh, crossing a limestone bed. It's quite beautiful. And it does have freshwater crocodiles on the banks. This one is sunning itself uh, and low lowering its body temperature by keeping its mouth open. There are sections of the river that have sufficient water for cruises. Fitzroy Crossing has long been notorious for Aboriginal drinking. This report indicates that 170 people have died uh, due to alcohol deaths in the last five years. In July 2007, the local community introduced a ban on alcohol. When I was there in November, uh, approximately 2,000 of the Aboriginal community had pulled up stakes and moved to Halls Creek, about 400 kilometers distance. I guess the quality of life was far better for those who were there in Fitzroy Crossing. I'll um, conclude this little dis um, travelogue on Fitzroy Crossing with a video from the ABC about the results of the grog ban. In most country towns, the sight of children playing in the streets might not seem out of the ordinary. But here in Fitzroy Crossing, it's remarkable. It was just three months ago that this tiny community was being torn apart by grog. We just had over 170 deaths in the last five years. Just about all of them were alcohol related. Sick and tired of the drinking and violence, the local women's centre came up with a solution, a six-month suspension on full-strength takeaway sales. We needed to get respite. We needed to address the volume of alcohol that was available in this community. As a result of that ban, if someone wants to drink anything stronger than light beer, they can go to the pub's main bar or the nearest bottle shop, a 600-kilometre round trip. The Women's Resource Centre has noticed a big difference in people's behaviour in just three months. Alcohol certainly exacerbated the level of violence and the frequency of violence and therefore women and children needing to seek refuge at the women's shelter. We've seen a steady decline in the numbers. Before the ban we'd have children congregating around the tourist bureau till quite late at night. But since the ban, there's, you know, you don't see kids hanging around out there anymore. I guess they must feel um, safe to go home. The ban has been so successful, other communities are using Fitzroy Crossing as a role model. 
and we're starting to see more communities start to to go down the line that Fitzroy's gone and, and um, making noise about, well, these, these are our problems, these are the things we want to do to address it. Despite the apparent success on the restriction on the sale of alcohol here at Fitzroy Crossing, there are vocal opponents of it. Unsurprisingly, the licensee of this hotel is one of them. He says the bans have actually failed because they don't address the real problems in the town. I think it's just easier to slap a ban on than to deal with the real issues. Before the ban, the Crossing Inn sold the bulk of takeaway alcohol in the town. It's actually owned by Fitzroy Crossing's Indigenous community under the company name Legal. Its licensee, Patrick Green, says unemployment is more of a problem than grog. Alcohol is one factor. Um, if they've got things to do, maybe it's not a problem. But at this stage, while they have free time on their hand, yes, alcohol is a problem. He also disputes claims there's less violence in the town since the ban. The drop in violence is maybe because when we are reporting violence, it doesn't go any further other than other people are reporting the violence. Late today, the 7.30 report obtained a copy of a damning review of Lidl, which owns the inn. It looks at the partnership between Lidl and the federal government-owned Indigenous Business Australia, which is aimed at providing business and employment opportunities to Aboriginal communities. If success is measured in terms of community involvement in and ownership of the outcomes of development projects or improvements to the community's well-being, then the Fitzroy project must be judged as having failed the community it set out to benefit. It also asks where the profits went. During the 18 years of the Trust's existence, Lidl as trustee has failed to distribute any of its profits to the beneficiaries of the Trust. They have achieved nothing in the way of control over policies relating to alcohol and employment. Tommy May is one of the Kimberley's senior traditional lawmen and a respected artist whose paintings hang in collections around the world. Three of his nine children have died in drinking related incidents. Since the ban he's been painting more and not being pestered or humbugged as it's called here by drunks. For our life, and for our life, we you know, strong and healthy. No, I'm back in every cab. One of the other effects of the ban has been a surge in interest in traditional law. Elders like Harry Youngerbun say there's been a reawakening of Aboriginal culture. Well, I was drinking uh, traditional law in a way of, like they look at themselves before what they were doing. You know? They're not, they wasn't really much interested in our culture side because they didn't really have nothing much to do here in Fitzroy. It's mostly the drinking. For many of Fitzroy Crossing's older people, the alcohol restrictions are a return to a time when people drank less and social ties were strong. We did better now, better life now. For a couple of months or I don't know what, three months? Yeah. You can see everybody all sober. Since this thing has stopped and people start to realise what effect the grog has done to them, and then uh, you see good results coming back from the people. Thanks for joining me on this visit to Fitzroy Crossing. Have a good day.